Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, and today we'll be taking a look at Overwatch's 8th digital comic, Old Soldiers, in which we see Jack Morrison, now known as Soldier 76, on the hunt for a mysterious hooded figure in Giza, Egypt. Discovering that the hooded figure has been causing problems for a local person named Hakim, Morrison follows the trail to Hakim's base of operations. Before he can question Hakim, he hears a familiar voice, and in the resulting confrontation, is reunited with Reaper and with Anna Amari in a full-on fire and fist fight with all sorts of lore tidbits. We'll be taking a quick look through talking points and interesting bits of the comic, along with a little light speculation on what new Overwatch story and lore we may have learned from it too. Suffice to say, this contains spoilers, link for comics in the description below as always if you haven't read it already. It's a great one. As a quick summary, we find Morrison reviewing a bounty board on which himself and a mysterious hooded stranger, we now know of course to be Anna's Shrike skin, feature. An onlooker explains that the stranger has been causing problems for someone called Hakim and his associates, attempts to hold up Morrison and finds out what a bad idea that is. Arriving at Hakim's compound in a rather violent style, Morrison then overhears a conversation between two voices, one of which seems strangely familiar to him. Upon busting into the compound, Morrison's tactical visor fails to spot any human life signs, whereupon he's then ambushed by a wraithform Gabriel Reyes, now as a Reaper. Addressing him as Jack, Reaper explains he's been hunting Morrison since the Swiss HQ of Overwatch was destroyed, and seriously wounds Morrison before moving in for the kill. Before he can deliver the coup de grace, a bullet hits him in the shoulder. It's Anna Amari, who by changing rounds in her biotic rifle, then shoots a healing dart to heal Morrison's injuries. Reaper and Morrison get into a fist fight, with Reaper again being distracted by Anna's covering fire. Wraith forming over to Anna, Reaper is shot by her with her sleep dart, to no effect whatsoever. Anna and Reaper fight on the ledge, with a nifty kick from Anna sweeping both to the ground before Anna removes Reaper's mask. Horrified by what she sees, Reaper then shares his opinion with Anna on why he's become this thing before disappearing like a wraith. Morrison and Anna catch up, Anna informs Jack that he needs her to watch his back before we learn that Morrison was looking for Anna to try and recruit her all along. The two old soldiers then head off before we're shown where all three used to be in a happier and past time. Here are some of the interesting things I enjoyed from the comic. Firstly, it's interesting to see more of Soldier 76 in action. We see Morrison's violent side and hero already, and we see a mixture of what's presumably lethal and non-lethal force here too. Although the man at the bounty board and this soldier appear to survive, I'm not so sure about this pile of people lying on the floor outside Hakim's compound. S76 is certainly doing what it takes. I also found it interesting that his tactical visor didn't spot any life signs. Now, of course, we don't know if Reaper was actually in his field of view here to be seen potentially by the visor as a life sign or not, but I wonder if Reaper would show on such equipment anyway. A little bit of speculation there for fun. Given that Soldier 76 has been around North America to Mexico and Dorado, and he's now in Egypt, he's surely racking up a few air miles. I do wonder how he's getting around whilst being a big wanted fugitive. Surely he can't be hopping on civilian flights. Next up, we see some interesting explanation about Hakim, Reaper, Sombra, and Talon. Now, the next interesting questions here are all raised from the conversation that Soldier 76 overhears when he enters Hakim's compound. The lines are between what we presume could be Hakim and Reaper. There's a lot of interesting points that I'll break down here. Number one, what are Reaper, Hakim, and potentially Talon as a result after that Helix are protecting and why? Now, given that we're in Egypt, it's flagged that we're in Giza near the Temple of Anubis here and that Reaper has been working closely with Talon. We could assume that it's somehow something to do with Talon. Now, that's not definitively said, but that's a presumption. Talon could be looking to infiltrate the Helix protected facility under the Temple of Anubis. Now why are there more links to this, even though it's not directly stated? We're referenced to be near there, as I've said. The Hakim voice also remarks that Helix locked things down after the incident. So in Farah's comic, Mission Statement, we know that Anubis, a god AI, broke free of constraints from this AI facility, was only stopped by Farah and her Helix security forces. That's who Farah works for. There's also a translation in this panel of the graffiti on the wall in Giza. AI is our right. Now maybe that's people protesting that Anubis is locked up or perhaps not being put to use. We know, of course, that god AI is a very powerful powerful, they've done a lot of harm, but what could they do in the right hands perhaps, or with the right programming or support? It might be a related clue to point to what Hakim and Reaper are actually discussing. Reaper also says that Helix don't know what they are protecting. Now that's quite an interesting point. If they are referring to the God AI and the Temple of Anubis AI facility, then what else could Helix not know about Anubis or the facility? As we've seen in Farah's comic, they already know that it's a God AI capable of doing immense harm, and this has been quarantined after the first Omnic crisis for many, many years. So what else do Helix not know about it, if indeed they are talking about this particular AI or facility. Bit of a mystery there. Second interesting point, Somra pops up again. Now, the data that Hakim is referring to, or the voice that I'm calling Hakim, was apparently all his people could get after trying to break into whatever Helix facility they were referring to. And then Reaper says he hopes that Sombra can get something useful out of it. So what does that tell us? Well, it shows that they're working together, following up the voice line that I revealed quite some time ago, and potentially links Sombra to Talon as well through Reaper. Given that we've seen recently still-framed clues to Sombra in recent Overwatch developer assets, other people have spotted 
spotted and done a great job in deciphering these. I'll round them all up in a video soon. There are some links in the description below if you're interested. And of course, the Dorado Sombra protocol that's been there that I've covered in other videos quite some time ago. Sombra now feels like a hacker information type character now in a whole bunch of different ways. Although, of course, we don't know that Sombra is conclusively Talon in the same way that we don't know that Reaper is conclusively Talon. In spite of working with Talon twice in the museum and, of course, in Recall, he's still an unknown affiliation on the Overwatch website. Sombra's links to Reaper certainly put her in the Talon mercenary sphere of operations. This probably puts her being away from some kind of vigilante hero if she's working with Reaper. But, of course, we know that Talon have been able to recondition people, so we know nothing about Sombra's past so far. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Thirdly, we see a bit more about the history and the previous relationship between Reyes and Morrison. There's certainly bad blood, of course, but we get more details. We've never seen huge detail about how the friendship turned sour before, and there's some nice background in this comic. When Reaper ambushes Morrison, he criticises him for always rushing in, and states that, I know your every move before you even think it. Always have, always will. So even when these two are getting on, Reaper thinks that Morrison is probably a little bit headstrong, always rushing in, and Reaper is kind of emphasising that he could always predict Morrison's actions, so maybe Reaper is of course the bit slightly more tactical type. Very interesting to see. We also hear that Reaper has been looking for Morrison since the Swiss HQ of Overwatch was destroyed, and directly quoting one of his voice lines in game, Reaper says, This is how it should have been. This is how it should have been. As he's about to do what he thinks is kill Morrison. You can hear that, of course, when Reaper kills an enemy Morrison in game sometimes, so that's a nice tie between the game and the comics there. Upon fighting Anna, Reaper then comments again, like a new voice line between the two, you always took his side. I shouldn't be surprised you took his side. If a Reaper kills Anna, I think, in game, that pops up. It shows that Reyes clearly has a grudge against Anna too. Anna, of course, was Morrison's second in command in Overwatch, and Reyes clearly has had some situations in the past where those two disagreed with his point of view. Now, most interestingly, and finally, when Anna takes off Reaper's mask, she's clearly horrified at what she sees, and Reaper says, he did this to me, Anna. They left me to become this thing. They left you to die. They left me to suffer. Never forget that. Very, very interesting, along with the emphasis in bold on some of those words. So if he is referring to Morrison, that can make sense. Both Soldier and Reaper actually have voice lines in game about not leaving men behind. Now, Reaper's does sound a bit more ironic or mocking than Soldier 76's, though. Never leave a teammate behind. No one left behind. That's some kind of soldier's creed, of course. The they? Well, they probably refers to Overwatch. However, there is, of course, in Reaper saying this, an immediate contradiction. Reaper says to Anna that they left you to die. We know from Anna's comic that Anna actually chose to stay behind against the orders of Morrison. And then she didn't tell anyone that she was still alive. So Reaper is possibly not the most reliable narrator, as Michael Chu, lead story dev on Overwatch, has mentioned on Twitter and in a few other places. What's for sure, folks, is that there is no she. So... Evil Mercy fans and mad Doctor Law speculation types. There's no proof against that train of thought that Mercy was somehow involved in Reaper's death, but it's very unlikely now that she's evil or caused it intentionally or anything like that. Reaper, however reliable he is or not, is sort of saying that they left me to become this thing, which is a very interesting point. Still, it'll be interesting to see exactly how Reaper was left, why he thinks that Morrison, if that's the he he's referring to, is responsible, and who the they that he believes are the people who left him to suffer. Still a bit more exposition required there. Perhaps that'll happen in First Strike. Another thing that we saw a bit more of here was a glimpse of Anna's current day combat skills and operating methodology. So she's got a huge bounty on her head. We've seen that in the first panel, 70 million Egyptian pounds. So she's clearly been causing big trouble for Hakim and his organization. Reaper mentions it. The person who's next to Morrison when they're looking at the bounty board mentions it. And Anna says that she's been carefully staking out the place for ages before Morrison came in all commando style and started causing a mess. Anna's clearly been working hard against this organisation if it is Talon or not, and it kind of fits with her cool, planned sniping approach. Anna's clearly a dead shot still, we can see her hitting Reaper, even hitting his gauntlet as he's about to strike Morrison in their brawl, and I really like this image of her holding many alternate dart rounds, healing and damaging of course, between her fingers here. Anna's still got her skills. Finally we see that she's no slouch in hand-to-hand -hand combat either, doing a lovely sweep to sweep Reaper to the ground here, and using him as well to cushion her fall from what looks like a really great height. She's definitely no grandma on the battlefield. Last but not least, we see a catch-up scene between Morrison and Anna, finding out where they've both been before the two end up teaming up at the end of the comic. We learn that Morrison thought Anna was dead, and Anna may have presumed Morrison was until seeing this S76 vigilante news reports. Morrison says Anna's clearly not interested in fighting, to which Anna explains what we've learnt in her origin story. She let people think she was dead, as she felt she'd failed everyone, and as I've shown in my Anna comic analysis, she was clearly feeling a great weight of all of the lives she'd had to take in her Overwatch service. 
She doesn't care about his war, but she does care about keeping her old commander part of her family, as we've seen in her comic and her origin story, safe. Now, there is an interesting line here in this conversation that I find fascinating. It's about Morrison's past. He says his old boss used to say that there's no such thing as luck, just good genetics. Anna says he sounds like a jerk, to which Morrison says he kinda was. Now, that sounds like someone either in the US military or the US soldier enhancement program who would be Morrison's old boss before Overwatch. We know that military scientists in America shape Morrison Reyes and other inductees into the perfect soldiers blessed with superhuman speed, agility and strength. So. If someone's talking about genetics, Morrison's old boss, perhaps all of this is on a genetic basis, gene therapy or similar, or something else perhaps. What do you reckon? The two then exchange a pertinent line. Anna asks what Morrison will do when the fighting is over, to which he replies, I'm a soldier, Anna. Our war's never over. Again, echoes of some new in-game voice lines there. As the two walk off into a who knows what mission next, it really reminds me of one of Soldier 76's lines in game, as we're left on a panel of Rares, Morrison and Amari in happier times. Old soldiers never die and they don't fade away. Finally, as a little bonus, we've actually just heard, given that it's July 2016 from Comic-Con via IGN, the first strike, the Overwatch graphic novel about the first Overwatch strike team is gonna be 100 pages long and out in April 2017. Now the cover has been revealed. My question, who do we think this lady or girl at the bottom with this robot Romnik is? I think it's a girl anyway. Could it be Liao, the sixth Overwatch original strike team member mentioned in the Overwatch launch blog, who we know absolutely nothing about? Speculation hype. Thanks so much for tuning in to this quick analysis of Overwatch's old soldiers digital comic. Sombra references, a fist fight between Reyes and Morrison, and a Romari. It's got it all. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please hit that like button below, subscribe and comment with what you'd like to see me cover next in Law Bites, my quick Overwatch lore made simple series, my regular series of Overwatch hero interactions, lore and voice lines, Easter eggs, map lore and a whole bunch more are all on this channel too. Links are here. Until next time, I've been Hammy, take it easy.